Well, every blessing to you all and welcome back to my open air pulpit and would you believe <laughs> the very moment I arrive and set up my camera it starts to rain the forecast for today was 18 degrees Celsius which is very nice for this time of the year around the same for tomorrow in fact most of this week looks really nice but you know me once I arrive at the open air pulpits it is business as usual last week I said I would return and look at Ezekiel 39 and that's what I plan to do <laughs> even though the rain is now coming down but it's nice and mild spring is very much on the way so just a very quick recap as to what we looked at last week Ezekiel 38 describes a future event which could take place at the end of the great tribulation or at the end of the millennial reign the scholars are split as to where exactly to place such an event from Ezekiel 38 uh, places such as Cappadocia are mentioned in verse 6 of course Gomar today is Armenia you think back to the Armenian genocide when Turkey just wiped out was it 2 million rarely discussed all these areas play such a huge part it starts back in uh, Mesopotamia it starts back with Jacob elsewhere referred to as being a Syrian and it ends with a Syrian being the Antichrist of course so Gomar modern day Armenia and even up until this day Turkey and Armenia are still hostile nations and Gog will come from that part of the world you've also got uh, the uh, Scythians mentioned over in Colossians chapter 3 Schofield suggests that uh, the Scythians or Scythians as I should correctly pronounce it could well be in reference to Russia possibly I don't know again most of our premillennial uh, brothers in the Lord some of the best going back to the days of Derby Schofield and Larkin are very much split but I think it's quite possible that countries such as Turkey Armenia and Russia going back to the Caspian and the Black Seas will play a huge part in this final uh, war of course also from uh, verse 13 Sheba and Dedan today modern-day Arabia were known to be a uh, very successful trading nations and also of course Tarsius modern-day Spain and we discussed that when I went through the book of Jonah was it two years ago now so again it starts with a Syrian called Jacob and it ends with the ultimate Syrian the Antichrist of course it starts with Mesopotamia and it ends in that part of the world Revelation 13 says how the beast comes up out of the sea and again most of our expositors the best of the best will say that such a reference is probably in reference to the Mediterranean the European Union and again go back to what I said last week Ukraine borders Poland Poland is an EU uh, nation and they say that Ukraine technically is a European country of course what most people don't realize is that one of the reasons why the EU don't want Ukraine to join is due to corruption and I think that Ukraine has the death penalty which the EU don't allow member states to retain unless of course it's for the abortion of unborn babies I saw an article last night which was very interesting to read in fact it was a news clip quoting an article very interesting and apparently NATO told Ukraine privately that she could never join NATO while at the same time telling Russia publicly that the door was open for Ukraine to join NATO also NATO don't really want Ukraine joining because as another commentator said <laughs> uh, Ukraine will be seen as a failed state and that's probably quite true but what are we now week four they're still fighting and yet I've seen webcams broadcasting live streams from Kiev and other cities in and around Ukraine looks very quiet 
looks very peaceful. A German news channel were caught out week before last, airing footage from an explosion that took place in China <laughs> five years ago and claiming that such an explosion came from Ukraine due to Russian bombardments. I saw a clip also from an Italian news channel and this time they were using footage from a computer game. Absolutely remarkable. So Ezekiel 38 gives us one account of Armageddon. Ezekiel 39 gives us another account of Armageddon. You think to Revelation 17, Revelation 18, you've got in chapter 17 ecclesiastical Babylon, chapter 18 economical Babylon. It's the same event but supplementing uh, the last days from two different uh, positions. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John give us four accounts of the Lord's first coming, whereas the book of Revelation gives us four accounts of the Lord's second coming. So I do think that Turkey will be a huge uh, nation. <clears throat> As of right now, Turkey seems to be siding with Russia, technically, publicly anyway. Israel seems to be shying away from hosting talks between Moscow and Kiev. Of course, what I hadn't realized when I came up to the pulpit last week, and I've been sent many articles to look at, and I've been discussing this with different people. Many of the uh, Russian oligarchs are Jewish. And one of the reasons why Tel Aviv have to walk a very fine line is because these oligarchs are generous donors to the state of Israel. And Israel needs all, their, needs all the friends they can get. So one of the reasons why the Prime Minister, Mr. Bennett, went to Moscow last week, or was it the week before last, wasn't just to get Jews out of the war zone, but it was to protect the money. Follow the money, as they say. They call that geopolitics. I know most people don't care for politics, I understand that. But you can't always ignore it. You have to be aware of what's going on. I saw a documentary, maybe in two or three months ago, called Monopoly. Who owns the world? Another sun's coming out, praise the Lord. <laughs> three companies, three companies run the entire world. And I forget the names. I think one was Black Rock and the other two I can't remember. But if you go online, look it up, it's worth watching and you'll be quite amazed. And these companies, these corporations, uh, these multi-trillion dollar enterprises, really can call the shots. I mean, you thought Big Pharma was powerful, and she certainly is, but some of these other companies are probably more powerful. And no politician on the face of the earth would dare clip their wings, because of course these corporations are very generous donors to political parties all over the world. So let's start this morning, if we will, in Ezekiel 39 verse 1. Therefore thou, son of man, again, pointing back to his humanity. He is in the line of Adam, obviously. Prophesy against Gog, speak against Gog. Gog is first mentioned, I think it's back in 1 Chronicles chapter 5. So Gog was a real person back in the days of 1 Chronicles. And it's my belief that as Ezekiel is penning his book, he is speaking to people during his day. Some of our dispensational friends will say, for example, that the Epistle of James isn't for us, the body of Christ, but it's only to the 12 tribes of Israel. That, of course, is a terrible blunder. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, profitable for doctrine, for a proof, for correction, instruction, righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What we don't want to do is overly divide the word of God and miss out on many blessings. Therefore thou son of man prophesy against Gog, almost certainly coming from Turkey, Armenia and possibly Russia, and say thus saith the Lord God, Jehovah is speaking, behold I am against thee O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. So again, not just a prince but a chief prince in scripture you've got two direct references to 
angels, archangels, you've got Michael, meaning who is like God, and the Seventh-day Adventists believe that Michael is Jesus, which of course he is not. You've got Gabriel, who stands in the place, or stands in the presence of God. Not necessarily referred to as an archangel, but uh, certainly senior. And it's interesting, you think back to when Mary was told to give birth, or when she was told she would give birth to the Lord Jesus Christ, the angel of the Lord appears to Joseph, Matthew chapter 1, which is quite possibly either the Holy Ghost or Christophany of the Lord Jesus Christ, and yet Gabriel appears to Mary. Gabriel is lower down the pecking order compared to the uh, angel of the Lord. And yet Catholics will say that Mary is worthy of worship and month after next. May time, they dedicate the entire month to Mary. And I will turn thee back and leave but the six parts of thee and will cause thee to come up from the north parts. Where they say Father Christmas comes from, the North Pole. These are all types of the Antichrist, of course. And will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So, let's just back up briefly. Antichrists are found throughout the entire Bible. I guess the first would be probably Cain, the first murderer. Then you got someone like Nimrod. Then you got someone like Pharaoh. And as you go through the scriptures, you find those that you wouldn't initially think would be types of the Antichrist, like King Saul and even Solomon, and yet Saul, I think it was probably saved, and I think Solomon was saved as well. But they are both types of the Antichrist. For the most part, it's probably 70-30. 70% in the Bible would be seen as probably Jewish Antichrists, 30% would be seen as Gentile. King Herod, I think from memory, was Assyrian, going back to Esau, so he's passed in the line of Abraham, uh, Jacob and uh, Ishmael, and uh, Isaac and Esau, but if you were to press me, I would say that the majority of the bad guys in scripture that would be considered to be Antichrist, like Judas Iscariot, would be Jewish, and I retain that belief. Mountains of Israel, and I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. So, if this takes place at the end of the Great Tribulation, you've had, what, two, three billion people just wiped out, plagues, pestilences, earthquakes, famines, heat really turning up, lack of water, and that's one of the reasons why Mark 16 says, if you drink anything that is deadly, you shan't die. And of course, that prophecy is yet to be fulfilled. That will take place during the Great Tribulation, quite likely when the 144,000 turn up. But as of right now, nobody has had to drink deadly poison. But during the Tribulation, the water will be contaminated. So during the seven years, break it into two halves. The first three and a half is the phony piece. And like I say, if you look at some of the webcams that are broadcasting live from Ukraine right now, most of the country is very quiet, very peaceful. Shops are still open. People are still able to fly in and out of Ukraine. And apparently Boris Johnson wants to fly in this week and meet Zelensky. And yet we're told that a quarter of a million Russian soldiers are surrounding Ukraine. Most are inside of Ukraine and yet the British PM wants to fly in and I read the other day that Biden wants to go to Poland right on the border they wouldn't put their people in harm's way if it was really as bad as we are being led to believe bow and arrow verse 3 and I'll smite them the Lord is speaking to Gog for thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel thou and all thy bands again all of your men, your troops, and the people that is with thee. So, like I said last week, the Syrians are fighting alongside the Russians. Ukraine is being very 
handsomely supported by the West. They can't say no, it would appear. Zelensky is still very much the man of the moment. Yes, he is Jewish, a secular Jew, as far as I can tell. And he's got the entire world eating out of his hand. Incredible. It could be that one of the reasons why Russia has decided to go in is to put a buffer between themselves and NATO. 1991, the Berlin Wall comes down, make that 1989, the Berlin Wall comes down. By 1991, Gorbachev abolishes the Soviet Union, who never stood trial, incidentally, for crimes against humanity. I've always been critical of Russia and China because they are both historically atheist states pushing Darwinism and not only pushing Darwinism but promoting anti-theism, anti-Christianity. But of course it's all changed hasn't it now? What was happening in Russia up until 1991 is now happening in parts of the UK. Every college, every university in this country which is funded by the taxpayer teaches evolution. I remember listening to a podcast many years ago and this preacher was traveling around colleges, campuses in the US preaching creation and he said every single time I get up to explain Genesis chapter 1 afterwards all the students gather around this is about 25 years ago when it was recorded I heard it a couple of years after being saved this guy's probably dead now but he said every time I get up to do the Q&A or I open up the floor for questions I'm always shocked he would say how the students would say to me we've never heard this before we've always been taught from day one that there is no God what did Karl Marx say religion is the opium of the people how science has proven there is no God of course science hasn't proven any such thing science can examine what is visible or available to be examined and all these students are getting up 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, young people saying, we never heard this before. We've been taught since day one that there is no God. And we've been taught that evolution is so, and they felt they'd been robbed of the truth. And you've got these professors, socialists, communists, haters of the West, so on and so forth, preaching this poison to their students. They call those people change agents, and these young people were very upset, they felt they'd been robbed. And of course they had been. There's a war going on at the moment for the truth. People are being censored all over the world. Nothing new of course, it'll only get worse as we await the return of the Lord. But I think one of the reasons why Putin is putting his men into parts of Ukraine is to push back NATO. Because when the war came down, when the USSR fell apart, it was basically outspent by the Americans. They spent nearly $800 billion on their defense. $800 billion. The Russian economy is the size of Italy's economy. And Russia felt they're being boxed in, and they probably were. So they thought to themselves, we're going to Ukraine. We can push NATO back. We can reinforce our borders. I'm not justifying it, but put yourself in the shoes of a Russian. Just for a couple of minutes. Be more broad-minded. Think about it logically. What would you do? You've got all these Western nations surrounding you. I mean, NATO is what, over a million strong, pushing you further and further back to your border and then coming right up against your border. I mean, look at that 1962. Khrushchev sends nuclear weapons over to Cuba. Castro thought he was the most powerful man in the world. Jesuit trained, of course. And uh, Kennedy got on the phone to Khrushchev and said, get your nukes out of here or it would be World War III, and of course Khrushchev backed down. They moved the nukes. The Americans wouldn't wear it. I mean, 90 miles off the coast of Florida, is it 90 miles? From Havana to Florida. Havana to uh, Miami, is it 90 miles? It's not very far. And the Americans said, get your nukes out of here or else. And the Russians backed down. And now you've got a million foreigners, a million Western troops surrounding Russia almost. And we expect Russia to sit back and put up with it. I think most people would uh, be very upset, very uneasy to have so many foreign troops on their border. Look at verse 4. Thou shalt fall upon the mountain of Israel, mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. He'll wipe out Gog 
and also all of his men going back to World War II Himmler using the Grand Mufti's men. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. There'll be a time coming in the future where exactly the place sits is problematic. If it's at the end of the tribulation, then not long to wait now. If it's the end of the millennium, there's a bit of a wait, obviously, but these nations will march up against Israel. It's happened 1948, 1967, 1975, and every single time these nations have decided to head up towards Israel, it's been a complete catastrophe. No country can take Israel. Israel is the beloved nation. That doesn't mean the Lord condones what takes place. Well, obviously not. Revelation 11 says that Israel, the holy city, is called Sodom and Egypt. And every Israeli premier, going back, what, 10, 15 years, have all been pro LGBTQ. Five. Thou shalt fall upon the open field. That sounds like Megiddo, a very vast terrain. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. When he speaks something, you better listen. He may delay his judgment 100, 200, 300 years. Many counts in scripture when apostate kings went against Jehovah. And he said, uh, I won't hit you with judgment yet, but when you're dead and buried, I will put it on your sons and your son's sons. God will postpone judgment going back to Solomon and his descendants. But eventually when the hammer falls, it falls hard. Look at verse six. And I will send a fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. And they shall know that I am the Lord. That's what this is all about, is to wake people up. People are very passive. Again, it goes back to the promotion of evolution, atheism, Darwinism, of course, all those people, Karl Marx, Engels, they aren't atheists, or they weren't atheists per se, they were anti-Christians, anti-theist. I think Karl Marx was a member of a secret society. And uh, like I said a few weeks ago, Charles Darwin was a Freemason, as was his father, as was his grandfather. Freemasonry believes in the great architects of the universe. Of course, thankfully, by the grace of God, we would believe, and we do believe, and I've said over the last couple of weeks now that, in fact, going back even further than that, I first wrote about Darwin's deathbed, deathbed conversion back in 2004, but it would appear that Darwin got saved before he died. And he would say to uh, the... Uh, Christian lady whose name escapes me when she came to visit him he would say to her please uh, get out the royal book and the royal book was the book of Hebrews 7 so will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel and I will not let them and I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore and the heathen shall know that I am the holy one in Israel you think back to the days of Rahab in the times of Joshua you've got two women in the genealogy of Christ Matthew chapter when you got Tamar and Rahab Rahab was a harlot a Gentile and of course she's connected to King David remarkable she rescues Joshua's men she is a saved woman she's a Gentile she's a prostitute and she says to Joshua's men she says uh, we've heard all about you being the Jews and about Jehovah going back to Egypt being destroyed and when we knew that you were surrounding our walled city we realized that we couldn't win your reputation went before you but I think going back to the Ukrainian Russian conflict Putin wants to put walls up he wants to reinforce his security which you would understand. Do you realize that there are 250,000 American troops in 130 countries? They've been there since 1940. And not one of those countries has offered their people a referendum. 
as to whether or not those American troops and intelligence officers should stay present. There was a march in, in uh, Italy about 10 years ago, I forget where it was, maybe in uh, uh, Genoa, Genoa, I think it was Genoa, and these Italians got together and they said to themselves, we want to get the Americans out of our country. There are, I think, I think there are three or four air bases in uh, Italy, and the mayor of this town, I think it was Gen uh, Genoa, uh, allowed the referendum to take place, but Rome didn't like it, because of course the Americans bring money, which, be, uh, which boosts the economy, so on and so forth. But the indigenous people said, no, we want the foreigners out. And the locals voted, I think 96% voted to expel the Americans from this city in uh, Italy. But Rome quashed it, cancelled it out. But how would you feel if you had foreign troops in your country? I mean, we've got thousands of American troops in this country. We've got two air bases near Cambridge. We've got intelligence officers also around the Cambridge area. I mean, how would you feel if you, if you are a Frenchman or a German or an Austrian or a Dane or whatever you are and you've got British troops in your country? Would you like it? Put yourself in the shoes of an Iraqi, 2003. The British, the Americans have made, invade your country, kick out Saddam, a tower man, but they kick out one bad man and put an American in charge, a guy called, uh, was it Paul Brennan? And he was there for many, many years, and they got sick and tired of having these Westerners telling them what to do. And of course, eventually, the Allies pulled out of Iraq, but there's still quite a few there to this day. So, when I look at these things objectively, and I have to do so, I wouldn't want French people or French troops in my country, or German troops in my country, and also that goes back to the Ukrainians, not wanting Russian troops in their country. And I appreciate where they're coming from as well. But ultimately, NATO has been building and building and building up. And as of right now, they are so powerful. But the cost to sustain 100, maybe like 250,000 American troops in 130, 130 countries, it goes into the billions. And yet those people whose nations are hosting foreign troops from America whenever asked for their opinion about it. And nor are we after World War II, I might add. Look at verse 8. Behold, it has come, and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. Somebody once said that God needs an alibi to gather all the nations. Isaiah says they are as a drop in the bucket, counted less than nothing. That includes Britain, America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. I know these countries are very proud of their heritage, I understand that. I'm very grateful to, be to have been born in this country to read the English King James Bible, which has made Britain what it is, very proud or grateful. I won't use the word proud, God hates pride, but I'm very thankful that he saved me when he did. And I love my country, don't get me wrong, but I have to be objective. In fact, technically, I'm a citizen of New Jerusalem. I don't condone what takes place in my country. But of course, I have no say. Now the powers that be run this country. Nine. And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the, and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the hand staves and the spears, they shall burn them with fire seven years. So, two views. Number one, if this is in reference to the Great Tribulation, then obviously weaponry has been knocked out due to the Lord punishing mankind. Uh, the arms industry will be on its knees. If it's in reference to the thousand year reign, also makes sense because of course Christ is on the new earth for 1,000 years. There'll be no tanks, grenades, rocket launchers being created of course but of course after a thousand years of Christ running the new earth man quickly starts to return to his wicked ways Genesis 6 6 every man did that which was evil continually and because he can't get his hands on hardware like rocket launchers grenades bullets he goes back to sticks and stones stuff such as that look at it again nine 
burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the hand staves and the spears. And they shall burn them with fire seven years. So, when I read this, I think to myself that it's probably in reference to the millennial reign, or at the end of the tribulation. But the term stave is like a javelin, which is what Goliath used. So we've gone full circle. I mean, as of right now, Russia's got more nukes than America. But like I said last week, America's got more chemical weapons than Russia and also China. So that's why nobody will do something silly. No trigger happy general, but there could be an accidental firing. A missile could go astray. But reading verse, verses 8 and 9, especially verse 9, due to peace on the earth for a thousand years there's no need to make weapons anymore obviously not but how quickly man reverts back to his fallen ways straight back to where he was pre the lords reign on the earth seven years and seven years must be literal so it could be in reference to the tribulation but more likely in reference to the millennial reign look at verse 10 so that they shall take no wood out of the field neither cut down any out of the forest forests for they shall burn the weapons with fire and they shall spoil those that spoil them and rob those that rob them saith the lord god fuel for their fires to keep themselves warm it's hard to really visualize this because as of, as of right now we're so spoiled you know we can go online within seconds we can do this we can do that we can fly around the world in a few hours but at a future point in time it's like the clock stops and the Lord goes back to the days of Genesis. Do you realize just over 100 years ago there was no Air Force? Pre 1914, there was no Air Force per se. Britain, I think, was the first country to have fighter planes. Submarines were like bathtubs. <laughs> By 1940, 41, 42, up until the 1950s, talk about a transformation. You got fighter jets, 60s, 70s, you got helicopters. In fact, helicopters started late 40s, but they really became popular during the Vietnam War. Stealth jets, going back to the is it the B 2 bomber, the American stealth jets, which were really used during the first Gulf War. I mean, invisible planes, radar can't pick them up. We've come such a long way. And any country that would mess with nations such as the US, Israel, Russia, Britain, China, France and others would just be making a huge mistake. So let's back up again and I will keep drawing parallels between what's going on in Ukraine now to, to what will take place in the future because we are being shown things now like we were shown two years ago when they rolled out the vax as a picture what will take place during the tribulation. People were saying year before last Give me the shots, I've got to have it, I've got to travel. I can't travel without the shots, which is actually incorrect. You can still travel without the shot. But for those of you that took it, it's too late now. But they were saying, I've got to take the shot to travel, so on and so forth, and yet during the tribulation, but I've got to take the mark to survive. And God says, if you take it, you're ruined. And they'll say, well, I'll take my chances, Lord, at the judgment. My parish priest says, uh, that he can forgive our sins if we confess our sins in the confession booth all that foolish talk so we're being shown time after time pictures of what will take place and as of right now this Ukrainian Russian conflict will probably blow over that's my feeling yes I'm still seeing flags flying because people have to believe in someone or something this is very much a I won't say an atheist country it's a very religious country it's an anti-christian country but most people in this country have to believe in someone or something they see ukraine as the underdog and yet ukraine isn't as innocent or the governments of ukraine are not as innocent as one might think go back to nine again and they that dwell on excuse me and they that dwell in the cities of israel shall go forth and set on fire and burn the weapons weapons both the shields and the bucklers the bows and the arrows and the hand staves and the spears they shall 
and they shall burn them with fire seven years. Now, I don't quite understand this passage. I don't have access to weapons, nor would I want to. But I guess if you had all the weapons lined up, uh, ammunition, guns, rifles, pistols, rocket launchers, stuff such as that, bazookas, grenades, I'm out of my depth now. <laughs> but if you had all that stuff and you just piled it all up, uh, and lit a torch I guess it would burn for a period of time it would warm you up pretty quickly I would imagine that's what's taken place for seven years so that they shall take no wood out of the field they won't need any wood neither cut down any out of the forests for they shall burn the weapons with fire second time that's been mentioned and they shall spoil those that spoil them and rob those that rob them saith the Lord God it's payback you think back to the days of the Reformation, places like uh, Switzerland, Germany, Britain, were freed from the shackles of the papacy, and for a period of time, good days were here, or good days had finally arrived, freedom of this, freedom for that, freedom to speak, freedom to worship, and in parts of Britain, you had someone like Henry VIII, who would reclaim monasteries castles churches from the catholic church and even up until this day they are still complaining that they lost lands due to henry the eighth going back to the days of the reformation but what most catholics don't realize is that during the days of the reformation people like henry the eighth or zwingli or others around the world were taking lands back from the Catholic Church, which they had first taken from the people. Because of course such lands had been stolen from popes of old. Verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto Gog a place thereof graves in Israel, the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea. And it shall stop the noses of the passengers. The stench will go up to heaven and there shall they bury Gog, and all his multitude. They shall call it the Valley of Haman Gog. Seven months to bury the dead. The stench will go up to heaven, like I say. You'll have man reverting back to his natural Adamic state. What does David say? How he went estranged from his mother's womb, speaking lies. We call that original sin. Passengers, we say today, passes by spectators and people are still flying over to Ukraine to support the struggle as they call it. It reminds me of the Spanish Civil War back in the 1930s, was it 1936, 37? A lot of Westerns, Westerners were flying over to Spain, a lot of British were flying over to Spain and Americans. You had the fascists being uh, Franco and the communists, I forget who the leader of the communists were, and that went on for a period of time. And of course, Franco, being a fascist, backed by the Vatican, a Roman Catholic, of course, was able to win. And he was in power from the late 1930s until the late 1970s. And I was told by friends in Spain that even until this day, the average Spaniard, the average Spaniard over the age of 60, 65, 70, the average Spaniard is still lacking literacy skills. Education was very poor. Uh, poverty was a huge problem in Spain. Of course, once Spain joined the EU, money was pumped into their country. But whether it's fascism, going back to Franco, who was a brutal dictator, or communism, socialism, and of course Hitler was a socialist, of course, and uh, Stalin was a communist. The reality is they're both the same. I mean, do you realize as of right now in China, you've got 200 people, mostly men, running a country with 2 billion people. And your average Chinese person has never known democracy, and they never will either. It's not allowed, of course. 12 again, 7 months, shall the house of Israel be bearing of them. Going back to 11, Gog and his men. Going back to the end of World War II. What a disaster that was. 
or the Mohammedans fighting alongside the Germans trying to defeat the Allies and destroy the Jews of course and it would appear based on MSN Syrians fighting alongside Russians as of right now it's also going very badly for them seven months shall the house of Israel be bearing of them that they may cleanse the land blood has been shed either during the tribulation or the millennial period take your pick both interpretations are valid 13 yea all the people of the land shall bury them and it shall be to them a renown the day that I shall be glorified saith the Lord God so he will gather all the nations uh, to come against Israel it won't take much to do it Israel is still the most hated country as of right now on the face of the earth most people don't know why they hate Israel and as I said last week once you lose the publicity war the PR war once a conflict kicks off like with like between Israel and the Palestinians most people in this country under the age of 30 would support the Palestinians because they always win the publicity war every single time once you lose the hearts and minds of society of the people it's very difficult to uh, come out on top Ukraine right now has won the publicity war they've won the hearts and minds of the people I'm still seeing flags flying near my home over the town hall and that's been the problem for the Israelis for years young people don't realize why they have an issue with Israel they've been taught such going back to that American preacher going into colleges preaching creation and hearing from students how they felt they've been robbed weren't made aware that there were answers that could be put against evolution like a creation always presupposes a creator something can't come from nothing to become everything that's scientifically impossible but of course once you fund evolution once you promote anti-christian thinking biblophobia christophobia once you get a generation or two to believe such it's very difficult to reverse it very difficult and what's going on between russia ukraine israel the palestinians the pr war is very similar but verse 13 yea all the people of the land shall bury them and it shall be to them a renown the day that I shall be glorified saith the Lord God Christ would always glorify his father and his father would always glorify his son 14 and they shall sever out men of continual employment passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it after the end of seven months shall they search continual employment I think Hitler was the first to achieve that over the years people have said uh, let's get people back to work work their fingers to the bones let's get women back into the workplace and these women many times are married with children and they're working 40 45 50 hours a week never see their children they sacrifice their children for their careers and yet like I said last week where are the female fighters in uh, Ukraine Russia why are the men doing all the heavy lifting and they shall sever out men of continual employment passing through the land to bury with the passengers to bury with the passengers the passers by those that remain upon the face of the earth those that have survived this suicidal mission to cleanse it to clean it you spill the blood the earth cries out for vengeance going back to Cain why is your brother's blood crying out to me after the end of seven months shall they search 15 and the passengers that pass through the land when any man seeth a man's bone then shall he set up a sign by it to the barriers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog it's like a flag or a marker so let's say I was 
using a metal detector to search the open air pulpits and incidentally there's no sheep here this morning if you wonder <laughs> and I was to come across some uh, metal object some item of interest and I would uh, get a flag shove it into the ground and I come out later to dig it up so during this period of time again tribulation possibly thousand year reign more likely take your pick the scholars are split like I say but because the amounts of the dead will be so vast I mean do you realize by the end of World War II hundreds of thousands of Germans were marched from uh, the gates of Moscow off to Siberia and I think from memory by the middle of the 1950s only 90,000 survived out of four five hundred thousand because so many people will die during this period they will have to mark up the ground to allow others to come along and deal with the remains of the dead 17 and thou son of man thus saith the Lord God speak unto every feathered fowl and every beast of the field assemble yourselves and come gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel that you may eat flesh and drink blood three times the word sacrifice appears the sacrifice of the mass what a blasphemy the belief that a priest a sinner can bring Christ down from heaven transubstantiate him turn his body into flesh turn the wine into the blood of Christ offer it upon the altar and as he's doing that the bell is rung and I should know I was an altar boy many years ago and Catholics go down their knees when the priest does that they call the mass a sacrifice but Paul told us to offer our bodies as a spiritual sacrifice 18 you should eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth of rams of lambs and of goats of bullocks all of them fatlings of Bashan Bashan being outside of Galilee and was known for its cattle and wood oak specifically and also the term Bashan goes back to Psalm 22 they pierced my hands and my feet surrounded me so on and so forth look at 20 thus you shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots with mighty men and with all men of war saith the Lord God chariots like riders the horse and his rider going back to Exodus 15 the destruction of uh, Pharaoh go to uh, Revelation 17 Revelation 17 now the wind is picking up Revelation 17 and uh, look at verse 6 and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus and when I saw her I wondered with great admiration John is shown this religious system it's not pagan Rome those who hold to the pre trust view would have you believe he's seeing papal Rome decked with purple and scarlet calling herself the one true church and it was laughable two weeks ago to hear that the Pope went to the Russian embassy in Rome to talk about the war again not discussing peace but discussing money all these oligarchs have to put their money somewhere and of course Rome has her own bank the Vatican Bank 
what do they say? Follow the money. And I saw the woman, the whore of Rome, drunken, with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. So Christ comes the first time, pagan Rome is calling the shots. You've got uh, Pilate, like uh, the governor. You've got Herod, like the mayor. And these two Gentiles are over the people. And the Jews are living under occupation for 200 years, going back to Julius Caesar invading around, was it 25? Cena, 25, 26 uh, BC or thereabouts and they've grown up with a foreign power over them they speak Greek going back to the days of Alexander the Great put yourself in the shoes of a Jew during the days of Jesus living with the Romans a pagan superstitious power Caesar seen as being godlike going back to the Jews living under the Pharaoh and the Egyptians and they too saw themselves as being godlike and Jehovah would spare the Jews during the days of Pharaoh via Moses and Aaron of course but Paul told you in uh, Philemon to submit yourselves to your owner and that's an incredible statement I know but Nowhere in the Bible, incidentally, does God condemn slavery, but he does allow it, and he also controls it, but he doesn't condemn it. Blood of martyrs, blood of the saints, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Jump over to chapter 18, look at verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven. And ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Go back to Ezekiel. So, when judgment falls, those that are in heaven will be rejoicing. You go back to Revelation, I think it's 18. It says how they were weeping and wailing as Babylon went out of existence. Because, of course, once Babylon goes out of existence, the gravy train is no more. Once the Vatican Bank is shut down, the gravy train is no more. Once you sanction all of these oligarchs around the world, the gravy train is no more. Again, follow the money. But like I said last week, some of your most popular politicians in America have financial interests in Ukraine. And that's why they are pushing so hard to defeat the Russians. But verses 17, 18, 19, picture a sacrifice that will take place. In fact, go to Revelation, I think it's 19. And this feels like double application. You think back to Matthew 24, Jesus speaks about the last days. Many will come in my name saying, I am Christ, will deceive many. And for the sake of the elect, those days will be few. False prophets. Revelation 13, the Antichrist, the false prophet, many will come in my name, going back to the popes, Ellen White, Charles Taze Russell, uh, Smith, all these people, and will deceive many. And in Revelation 19, uh, pick it up in verse... Seventeen. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, feathered fowls, it's almost word for word, isn't it? Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Not the marriage supper of the Lamb. This will take place on the earth, whereas the marriage supper of the Lamb takes place in heaven. 18 that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men both free and bond both small and great and I saw the beast 
and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army Christ is on the horse and I've discussed in previous videos you've got two horses two horse riders you got Revelation 6 the Antichrist comes on a white horse uh, with a bow from memory no arrow a full sense of peace and he does a deal with the world this peace treaty is broken halfway through Daniel 9 Daniel 11 Revelation 19 another horse appears someone else on the horse and this time it is Jesus if it were possible even the elect would be deceived Ezekiel 39 21 and I will set my glory among the heathen the nations the Gentiles and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I've executed and my hand that I have laid upon them he wants recognition and why shouldn't he get it 22 so the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day and forward as of right now Jews and Israel for the most part are secular not in belief obviously and that will change at a future point in time yes most Jews globally don't believe in the Bible rarely read it but that will change in the future so you should always pray for Israel and especially for the peace of Jerusalem look at 23 and the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity he deals with his own people first and foremost Peter says how judgment must begin at the house of God and he will use someone like Nebuchadnezzar to whip Israel force them to either repent or perish and someone like Jeremiah is a picture of a tiny remnant who survives it but most would not and as of right now he's using someone like Putin to whip uh, Zelensky but like I said last week the tragedy is, is that Russia and Ukraine are basically of, of the same bloodline and you've got people probably above Zelensky and above Putin the real powers of this world principalities and powers in the high places who are causing a civil war and the tragedy is that young men are dying and many if we go by recent figures in their thousands terrible and the heathen the Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity that's why this is happening because they trespassed against me therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hands of their enemies so fell they all by the sword it goes back to Moses narrowing like I say rescuing the Jews uh, Samson raised up to rescue the Jews Elijah and uh, Elisha and even Jonah were sent to preach to the Ninevites Tarsus again modern day Spain the reality is that if you are a Brit you have no place in this book whatsoever uh, I know the griffin the line is mentioned over in Daniel and I'll discuss that during a future video but for the last days apart from the English language which we gave the world apart from that the Brits play no place in biblical prophecy and all the Americans or others it's the kings of the east marching against Israel 24 according to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them and hid my face from them go to second Corinthians 4 in Matthew 24 it says uh, how Jesus went out to the temple and never returned he said elsewhere you won't uh, acknowledge me or you won't uh, call on my name until you say blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord now the wind is picking up again uh, 2nd Corinthians 4 and uh, look at verse 3 but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost going back to Isaiah 6 and the cross reference to Ezekiel they have eyes but cannot see they have ears but cannot hear they have chosen to reject Jesus for 
in whom the God of this world, being the devil of course, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Go back to Ezekiel 39. So as of right now, the Jew is blinded. He's in the land of Israel in unbelief. Yes, there are many believers in Israel. Praise God for those people. And the role of the church is to make the Jew jealous, not to persecute the Jew, not to attack the Jew, to intercede for the Jew, to show the Jew the love that we have for Jesus, who is the express image of God Almighty. 39, 25, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name after that they have borne their shame and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safely in their land their land doesn't belong to the Muslims the Catholics the Protestants their land and none made them afraid as of right now the jew is living in fear and i've been to israel yes many years ago i appreciate that but i've been there spoken to jewish people we had a very kind jewish guide an unbeliever and I always remember what he said to me he said uh, we want peace we want peace and i believe he meant what he said but of course there'll be no peace until the prince of peace returns and here we are middle part of 2022 Israel still on a war footing another reason why I think the Israeli premier is cautious wary about not getting too involved with Moscow and Kiev is because Israel has a very weak coalition government and if the deal goes south if it blows up in the face of the Israeli premier his government could collapse and Yetanahu could get back into power see again geopolitics there's so many strands so many layers that most of us in fact all of us have no idea really how government works at the highest level and we feel we know what's going on we feel we can trust politician a politician b but of course we can't trust politician a or politician b we have no idea what they are up against or what they are into this goes back to the lord's holy name and the name of jesus every knee will bow look at 26 uh, again after that they have borne their shame carried their shame lived with their shame the shame of rejecting jesus the shame of worshiping sticks and stones that's why they went into captivity the shame of being a part of wickedness, evil, all over the world. And yet the Lord keeps the door open for the Jew. And all their trespasses, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us, whereby they have trespassed against me, when they dwelt safely in their land, and none made them afraid, made them afraid. So this is probably in reference to the thousand year reign, but again, it can go either way. Matthew 24, double application. Matthew 24, 70 AD. Matthew 24, end of the tribulation. Double application. Revelation 17, Revelation 18, two sides to the same coin. The four gospels, four accounts of one event. Revelation, four accounts of one event. Ezekiel 38, 39, two accounts quite likely of one event 27 when I brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies lands and am sanctified in them in the sights of many nations sanctified like hallowed like uh, consecrated it's a wonderful picture to come across a Jew that number one believes in Jehovah number two receives Jesus and number three as the King James Bible very rare I think most Jewish believers that I've been aware of over the years are messianic and don't use the King James they use 
new Bibles which are problematic going back to corrupt Greek manuscripts and you will find many if not all messianic Jews calling Jesus Yeshua and God Yahweh but like I say to my Jehovah's Witness friends when I see them on the streets in this past week <coughs> I was witnessing to my Jewish, make that my Jehovah's Witness friend again, <laughs> all these J's, and I was telling my Jehovah's Witness friend that the term Jehovah is not found in any Greek manuscript, and of course it's not, the term is Theos, of course Jehovah is uh, from the Latin I seem to recall, based on the textogrammaton, no one's heard God's name pronounced, some say it's Yah, some say it's Jah, but uh, I was telling my JW friend, I use that term loosely, friend, that the term Jehovah isn't found in any Greek manuscript, it's not. And yet they still want to call the Lord Jehovah in both testaments. The term Jehovah is found a handful of times in the Old Testament, not the New. When I brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, living under occupation, going back to Pharaoh, Nebuchadnezzar and uh, Nazi Europe of course and I'm sanctified, hallowed in them in the sight of many nations, he'll live inside those that he regenerates then should they know that I'm the Lord their God in a personal sense going back to Matthew chapter 7 Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name, cast out devils in your name, did many wonderful works in your name. Lord, Lord. And he says, I never knew you, apart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. He couldn't say that to somebody who was saved, is saved. But he could say that to somebody who was never saved to start with. And here, 28, it's a personal knowledge. It's like a husband knows his wife. A wife knows a husband. 29 neither will I hide my face anymore from them, praise God for that for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God Joel 2, Acts chapter 2 so let's just back up and I will wrap this message up during the tribulation possibly millennial reign, more possibly or more probably I should say you'll have a war you'll have this suicide mission armies will be gathered with Gog at the forefront they will follow Gog to their deaths incredibly over 10 Russian generals have died in Ukraine 10 only one American general died in Afghanistan and that went on for what 15 years but Gog will be leading from the front <coughs> he feels he has a chance I mean he's deluded into thinking that he can beat Jehovah take the land and all this hatred a thousand years of being kept down by King Jesus we can't do this we can't do that hey boys let's go march against Jerusalem let's try and overthrow the King of Glory and they all get swept up in the moment and they march against Jerusalem up to Jerusalem and this time the Lord steps in and just wipes them all out no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and the Lord just wipes out untold numbers of enemies of his bodies all over the place it takes seven months to find the dead to bury the dead in the meantime you've got birds vultures wild animals coming along eating up the flesh of the dead but eventually to stop the land being defiled going back to uh, numbers 19 like verse 11, you can't touch the dead, you'd be ceremonially, ceremonially unclean. Because of course during the thousand year reign, the law is reinstituted. The sacrifices return. The Levites are mobilized once again, so you can't be defiled. And that's why you have to find the dead, bury the dead, to cleanse the land. So again, one final time, what we are seeing now is a picture on a much smaller scale 
I will grant you that. As to what will happen on a much larger scale, it's also interesting how it would take the Allies a month before Iraq fell, and six days before Baghdad fell, they had more troops than Russia has, and yet the plan would appear not to take the entire nation of Ukraine, but to cripple parts of Ukraine so she can't flourish. She remains a failed state, a corrupt state, and because of that the EU will never receive her, NATO will never receive her, Putin will have his steel fortress to keep NATO back going back to people living under occupation or surrounded by foreigners and nobody would want that most people would want to be dwelling safely in their borders and for 1000 years that is what will happen but eventually the nations mobilize and of course the rest is a picture of bloodshed misery terror so Let's wrap this message up. Tribulation, possibly. Millennial reign, probably. Gog, the Antichrist, the final Antichrist, possibly. Nations are just waiting to follow their leader. They will follow him into perdition. God steps in, no weapon formed against these shall prosper wipes out Gog, the man from Turkey, Armenia, Russia, quite possibly, into the lake of fire he goes, the beast of false prophets as well, thousand year reign, the nations are repopulating, they produce a rebel leader who is a final antichrist, again Gog can be interpreted in two ways, the antichrist, Daniel 9, Daniel 11, the ultimate Antichrist, Ezekiel 38, 39, Revelation 20. And he puts his people together. They march, hoping they can overthrow the Almighty. He laughs from the heavens. He sees this futile attempt from sinners going back to how sin is still prevalent on the new earth. Man is still basically bad. <clears throat> and because of that, <coughs> the Lord allows it to continue and all that murmuring going back to the Jews murmuring against Moses murmuring against Messiah and that generation that murmured against Moses were destroyed and those that murmured against Messiah were destroyed 70 AD and this final war this final march against Jehovah against Jerusalem will end in a terrible fate and when it happens you'll see it from heaven because of course we are in heaven if it's a tribulation or we are on the new earth or in new jerusalem if it takes place during the millennial reign we will see it with our own eyes quite a thought and i better wrap this message up now the wind is picking up quite strong now but that's how i see ezekiel 38 39 and I think you've had enough for this morning and I appreciate you bearing with me as I battle the wind but you know me once I arrive at the open air pulpit rain or shine breeze or not <laughs> cold or hot it's business as usual and I think on that statement I will now sign out and bless you all abundantly in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen and Amen